Well, it is a place that needs little introduction. Behind me is Ditchit, the home of the champion trainer, Paul Nichols, who is very close indeed to 50 winners at the Cheltenham Festival. He stands on 48, having saddled that amazing treble back in 99 with the Arca winner, the champion Chase and Seymour Business in the Gold Cup. And with the quality that he's got to look forward to in 2024, that landmark might just be in sight. Paul, we're, we're approaching the Cheltenham Festival. There's so much talk, of course, there is going into each and every year. Just, just how do you feel at this stage of the season every year? I, like it's it, it, a lot of pressure this time of year because mm. you want to get everything right. You want the horses to stay right. You don't want any stupid injuries. Um, and you also want to have plenty of winners, which luckily we have been having the last couple of three weeks. Yeah. Um, remarkably, I know we're obviously going to focus on the future and rightly so, but. I guess when you reflect, 25 years since that epic 1999, yeah. the Arc all, the Champion yeah. Chase, and then the Gold Cup in the same week, was it, and it was three days mm. then, was that just a week to dream of at that stage of your yeah. life, your career? It was surreal, really. Um, you know, I was getting frustrated because I hadn't had a Cheltenham winner, and yeah, everybody wants, just as you, I think, on Cheltenham winners or whatever, and we've been ticking along nicely, and I think it was only eight years we've been training. To me, at the time, it felt like 28 years. Yeah. And then, of course, I, you know, we went into that week with some chances and the first day flagship Uber Ollis with Joe won the Arco. We enjoyed that night. And then, then the next day we won the champion chase with Paul Ekwene with Fitzy on board. And then the next day we won the Gold Cup with Seymour Business again with Fitzy on board. It was just an incredible three days. It's just like, I look back now and think, oh, I can't. it was just like a whirlwind, the whole yeah. thing happened. It, it's just like a dream, to be honest with you. So were you coming back here each night and then going out to Cheltenham yeah. and thinking it can't happen, it can't yeah. happen, and it was happening? Yeah, and like, you know, we go down the manor that night and we'd say, come on boys, <laughs> we better celebrate because it won't happen again. <laughs> and then it just kept on and on and on. And it was just one of those incredible weeks. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I'm very lucky for me because that kicks started my career, really. And those, you know, I've got a fantastic painting down in my living room over those three horses' heads winning at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. And they, they basically changed my life, really. So, quarter of a century on, on the cusp of 50 winners there at the meeting, it is a special place filled with the most awesome horses, yeah. competitors, yeah. human and equine. I guess that kind of sums it up as, a, as an entity, the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, it's the Olympics of our sport, isn't it? Yeah. It's, the, it's the best. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good racing either side of Cheltenham in this country, and you can't be solely focused on the Cheltenham Festival, but everybody in racing wants Cheltenham winners, and that's what we all try and achieve. How would you summarise 2024 squad? A small select team. We've got a dozen yep. runners. Um, hopefully, horses have got chances. You know, that's the idea is to pick out horses and run the horses, in my mind, they've got chances. If they're not good enough, they don't want to be running the challenge. Yeah. They want to be going where they can win. How far in advance do you think you, you hone down who is for what? Obviously, uh, they've got to stay fit and healthy. Yeah, they've got to stay fit and healthy. And, and like, I mean, at the start of the season, if you'd have said to me, Ginny's Destiny would be <laughs> favourite for the Turners, yeah. we'd probably all smart at ourselves. But those horses do develop through the season and, and put themselves in. On the team sheet, as it were, yeah. um, and the obvious ones that have, like last year's two winners, you'd like to think they'd stay mm. sound and end up going back. And you, you know pretty well the ones you you do pretty well know the ones that you think are going to be good enough. And they get a few surprises. And uh, Ginny's Destiny and Liara, who's, yeah. uh, uh, who's unbeaten in three juvenile hurdles, uh, Tishan has just joined the team mm. and won. You know that you get surprises, but you try and select what you think will go to Cheltenham and be competitive. Four Gold Cup winners, I know how much they mean to you. Yeah. I know how much they mean to Clifford Baker, yeah. we spoke to yeah. him earlier. He said he would love to be associated yeah. with the Gold Cup winner again. Yeah. What about this year? Look, we got a chance. He was second in it last year. He's a good horse. He's coming right back to his best now at the right time. I don't think that we've had him at his best in his three runs this season for different reasons, really. Um, but last year's win as Gallup and Champs going to be hard to beat on, yeah. on the form book. You know, we beat us fair and square last year. And, I don't know what we can do to beat him this year. He, he seems awesome. His two wins at Leopardstown have been incredible. So I think there's three or four horses underneath him that are probably on a par with each other. Yeah. Um, I've got it all to do to beat the favourite. With um, his season so far, I know he had the three yeah. runs at the end of last year going into the beginning of 2024. I know he didn't win or hasn't won yet, but um, it's not like they've been bad runs, any no. of them. No, not at all. He ran second in the Charlie Hall on heavy ground, which, yeah. and he wasn't really fully wound up that day. 
then I suppose the Betfair Chase came quick enough after that, and then that was another hard race before yeah. the King George. Um, and I don't, he ran well in the King George. He's been running well in all three races, but I don't think he's been quite at his best. Um, hence, we've kept him fresh. We didn't want to run him, and I'd say he's right back there again. Sun started to shine. He looks great in his coat. He jumped very well. Harry was particularly impressed, and he scored him last week and said to me, he feels right back to his best. Yep. Felt amazing. Ran away with him on the gallops, and I think he's in good shape. And last year, clearly going King George yeah. to Cheltenham, that worked. It, it wasn't a bad, bad route, was no, it? No, it wasn't, so. and I, that's why we've done that again. As I said, I don't think... I keep saying I didn't cover myself with glory in the in the in the autumn with training him, but it was just the way the cards uh, fell. And I can see Brian Drew's point of going for the Betfair Chase. There's only four runners. It's 200 odd grand race, so you've got to give it a go sometimes. You don't win races in your stables, but in hindsight, I think probably we haven't yet had him where we want him. He's best very fit and very fresh. Stage Star is already a Cheltenham Festival winner. If he is back to where he was mm. when he won the Paddy Power Gold Cup, which is a handicapping yeah. performance, was yeah. awesome. How big a player is he in the Ryanair? Oh, massive. If we hadn't run him on New Year's Day, he'd be favourite. And I just by running him on New Year's Day, I probably was looking for any excuse not to, and we didn't really have one, and it didn't work out. He's fine now. I'd put a line through that run, and um, very happy with the prep and the way he looks. And he's, he, he is good fresh, and he loves the track. That Paddy Power, it, it, I think the data showed how many lengths he lost at mm. that last fence yeah. to still go on and do yeah. what he did. That was awesome, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, that says how good he was. And if he runs like that, it, it, he'll run very close. Yeah, you know, he, he, and we think he's we think he's there. He's not the easiest in the world to train. He has a few little issues, but we know them. We, we've dealt with them, and as I said, we're happy with him. Have you been working back from the Ryanair all season? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, if I hadn't run him on New Year's Day, at the end of the day, he was favouring a hundred grand race. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't have had a run from you know the end. It could have ended up with two runs in a season because yeah. it's not. And he has to go left-handed and. We hadn't gone up to three months. The only race I could have probably run in him, run him in if I'd wanted to was the Denman chase. But with that being getting close enough to Cheltenham, probably was. So I think we've done the right thing. Well, you ran Hitman in that, and I yeah. guess he was third in the Ryanair yeah. last year. He deserves his place, doesn't he? Different horse, D totally different horse to Stage Star. Yeah. And I've just let him come along quietly. I hadn't been hard on him, so I was thrilled with his run in the um, in the Denman chase, second to Shiskin. And, you know, he was just behind, well, not, you know, he ran well behind Shiskin in last year's Ryanair chase. So if he runs in that sort of form, he's got a chance of being placed, definitely, at least. You mentioned him earlier, but how much fun have you had with Ginny's Destiny this year? Uh, incredible, because, you know, the improvement from his second, third and fourth run have been amazing. He showed us that at home, mind you. He, he had improved incredibly and um, his work was good and he just seems to suit our system and just got better and better and better. What kind of a horse did you feel you actually took on when you first got him? Just a nice horse. He'd run yeah. some solid races last year. It had been spectacular. A lovely horse to go novice chasing with. Yeah. Took a lot of getting fit. He was nowhere near fit on his first run. And the only, time, only way we were going to get him ready was to give him a run and get a bit of experience. But we knew he'd take a huge step forward from that first run and never thought he'd end up where he is now. I mean, he's rated higher now, I think, than what stage show was going into the race last year. When did you think we could run him in a grade one at the festival, let alone maybe be favoured After for his it? third run. Yeah. He was, he was very, very good that day. Top weight. Just did it very nicely. And it's on the obviously the, the the course switch for the Thursday. The new course and him seem to click yeah. together quite well. You've had Same horses that, that have that that sort of attribute before, haven't you? Yeah, big galloping track that one. More so, it's not quite so sharp as the as the old course, which will go against. We might talk about him in a stay away phase. Yeah. It, it suits it suits Jinny's destiny very well. Um, if he were to go and win at the Cheltenham Festival this year, would that be uh, by way of a season the biggest sort of? pleasant surprise you'd ever had as a trainer? Well, it wouldn't be now, but it would have been no. earlier in the season, you know, because we didn't really know what we had. Mm. I mean, I hadn't trained him before, but it didn't take us long to work out. We got a very smart horse. Yeah. And actually, um, Claudia rides him every day and rides Pick Dory. And she kept telling me all season, oh, he's as good as Pick Dory. And I'd get laughing at her all season, but actually she might be right. Well, we might be going to Claudia at the yeah. end and saying you, you, you had it right all along. Um, yeah, stay away, stay away Faye, brilliant winner last yeah. year, of course, of the Albert Bartlett. It, has his novice chase season been what you expected so far? Yeah, he's won two two good races. He won that nice race at Sandown, ran very well against the, the big boys, as it were, at Cheltenham. Yeah. That won't be lost on him, that experience. The only negative to me is when he won the Albert Bartlett, that was on the new course. Mm. The, the Cotswold chase, it was on the new course. The brand advisory is on the old course, which we all know is a little bit sharper and mm. easier, not so much emphasis on stamina, which might count against him. So we need the race to be a, a you know, good solid gallop or he's going to have to do something himself because he's all about staying. Do you think you lot learnt lots about him while well, he would have, of course, learnt from the experience of, of the Cotswold chase? Did you learn a little bit more about him as well? 
I think I think he learned. Yeah. I think that race won't be lost on him for his whole future. I was thinking about novices you've run in open company. Yeah, Alpha often, many, didn't he? Yeah, Alpha, he we, we, we've run a few. House. We've run a few, but uh, you know, I wasn't. There wasn't too many. The problem is now in this country, there's not too many races no. those horses can run in. If I'd have waited for the Reynolds Town, to me that was too close to Cheltenham for him. And I knew that the timing worked out last year from trials day, like when he ran at Doncaster, to the festival mm. gave us a nice time to give him a little tiny break and then really drill him and have him ready for the big day. Um, so it won't be lost on him, but I just, I wish it was on the new course, not the old course, but look, we can't have it all the ways. He, he'll, he'll be very competitive, I know that. And is it e the easy decision to make rather than the, the, staying, the staying race, the National Hunt Chase? No, I wanted to keep Harry on him, that's yeah. why he stayed with jockeying and none of us were keen to run in the other race. You know, look, listen, we could have used Will Biddick and you wouldn't get anyone better than Will Biddick, but I think we're right staying down the novice route. And lastly way. with him, this time next year if we were to speak, do you think he, he would be a, a player potentially for the Gold Cup? Well, I'd like to think so. He's got to take a huge step forward. I just Whether he just lacks a gear just to be that speedy enough for a goal, whereas Brave Man's got plenty of boot and can travel, he's more, he's a bit more like Demo and a bit of a stayer. But, I mean, I'd like to think in my mind that we might start in the Betfair chase next year. That's three okay. and a quarter miles. Big. That would suit him nicely. That might tell us where we go. Obviously, you'd have an entry in the Coral Gold Cup and things like that, but he could be just high enough for handicaps. But, um, uh, yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah. I just wanted to mention to you that the champion bumper this year, there's T-Shan. Yeah. Is T-Shan going to be alone or might he be joined? Well, he might be joined by two, yeah, actually. Um, called Beckwith. He, he, he's a nice horse. I always said he was going to run in the race, just like Captain and T did last year. He's a nice horse, not as such a talking horse as Tishan has been. Obviously a lot of pressure off us when he won the other day because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about him winning his point to there? point. But anyway, no, he did that nicely. They're both horses the same as Captain T. And I might just run Farland as well, who's a, an, a hugely talented horse, but he's a bit quirky. He won at Fakenham the other day. He'd run well in a big race at Punchestown in the spring and he, he was second in a good bumper at Aintree. But he's just a bit naughty. Yeah. Um, but it's got a huge amount of talent. And he's the sort of horse that wouldn't surprise you. He ran about the 50 to 1 or something like that. So I might run three. And when you have the right horse for it, I know you, you yeah. said about Captain T. Alpha Roth ran a good race behind Q Cut all those years ago. And uh, look where you, he ended up, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I guess you can't lose too much by running in the race. Clifford said, I think we've run in the race that's been placed. It ended up being a grade one winning hurdler. There you go. So, you know, let's hope we can do the same again with one of these two. And I just want to mention as well Captain Teague, who was your latest winner yeah. of the Chalo Hurdle. What a run that's been. Are all systems go for the, the festival? Yeah, he's well ready. He's going to have a gallop at Kempton with Brave Man's Game just to put the finishing touches to him. Everything's gone well. He'll run in either the, the um, two and a half mile. The Barrow Bingham. Yeah, Barrow mm. Bingham. <laughs> that, or, or the Albert Bartlett. I'd probably, if the grain was like, the sun shone and there was a little bit of rain, it was good to soft, he probably run in the Albert Bartlett. So a late decision potentially on yeah, that one. but I think in my mind I know what I'm thinking. Later down the line for him, it's all about chasing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, can't wait yeah. to be chasing next season. So in conclusion, having talked about yeah. it, just quiet excitement about the squad? Are you always excited to go to Cheltenham with horses and we got some nice chances, you know, it's it'd be hard races to win and you could have a, all of them run well and not win, you know, but it's nice to have some serious chances. Wish you luck. Thank you very much indeed.